guys retro here today i'm doing random retro episode 5 uh, that's basically like a show and tell where i show some random stuff that i have uh, most of this stuff will probably be appearing in future episodes um future videos but uh for now uh, and some of the items uh, might not fit in any particular video so i'm just showing everything here but anyways you get the idea let's just get started here so first up is this WWE toy ring. It's knuckle crunchers, knuckle crunchers, knuckle crunchers, knuckle crunchers. So you can see it's this toy ring here. You have to assemble it. Uh, I guess you put the posts and it has the ropes and stuff like that. It doesn't come with any of the action figures. Uh, here you have John Cena uh, that looks like Roman Reigns, Brock Lesnar that looks like um, oh my God, what's his name? Seth Rollins and. I Yes, that's supposed to be Randy Orton, but he has a bit more hair than I'm used to him seeing, or used to seeing him have. That makes more sense. Uh, but yeah, comes with all these things here. A little tape, or uh, looks like a stretcher, I guess. WWE branded stretcher. Um, one of these wood thingies. A table, a 2x4, a shuffle, and crutches. Um, so that's pretty cool. I'll definitely be making uh, maybe an unboxing video. And uh, maybe I'll do some like animations or something with this, but uh, it's definitely going to be a lot of fun. And it has this little sample here, you can feel the mat, the ring mat. It's pretty soft. It's cool. Rebound ring. You can see it's raw branded. Let's take a look at the back here. Yeah, so it's got all this stuff. You can see here. It doesn't come with the hands. shows you how to assemble it boop, 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 boop. so yeah that's gonna be a lot of fun i'm looking forward to making some videos with this thing okay speaking of wrestling i have these wrestling uh collectible cards or whatever wrestling cards i can't remember if i've ever shown these before on the channel so i'm just gonna show them again because why not wrestling theme and don't worry it's not gonna be all wrestling stuff if you don't like wrestling but um so yeah these are the cards i don't know if this is probably like late 2010s or not late 2000s so like around 2010 maybe a bit later i don't know um so we have Nat uh, natalia still around greg valentine is obviously retired eve she's gone jerry the king lawler he's kind of i see him around sometimes i don't know Triple H, Lillian Garcia, Titus O'Neil. I haven't seen him in a while. Is he still, like, work backstage or something? I don't know. Sean Mitchells, I mean Michaels. Alex Riley, I haven't seen him in a long time. Yeah, I know he got fired. Uh, and these are just the backs here. Or if it says the year, it probably does, but yeah, that's way too small for me to see. Then we have another one. I'll remember this guy, Ricardo Rodriguez, Tyler Rex, Santino Morella, Theodore, Theodore Long, and Beth Phoenix. Okay, let's look at, let's see if I can read the back of one of these. Oh, that's a very, very small reading. Let me grab my glasses. Okay, that's better. I can actually see a little bit. Santino Morella, number 85. Uh, it says, height 6 feet, weight 233 pounds from Calabria, Italy. Okay, that is for the miracle from Milan. It's almost impossible. Wait, from the pick, from the pen of Mick Foley. It's almost impossible to say the name Santino Morella without breaking into a grin, a smile, or an outright chuckle. This unique young man has got to be one of the most entertaining WWE superstar of all time the clash of santino's cobra and my own socko has already become stuff of legend but it was santino's very serious performance at elimination chamber 2012 that allowed me to see the very real possibility of a morello world title reign somewhere in the future well that never happened but anyway cool 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 i wish i had more of those but you know all right, switching gears a little bit. Check that out. It is Karate International. K A R A T E 
Actually, it's Michael D. Pasquale Jr.'s Karate International. Just gotta get it right here. Uh, so yeah, obviously a Karate Magazine special then and now Van Damme autographed centerfold. That's what I'm talking about. So there he is, the man, the myth, the legend, Jean-Claude the Van Damme. Exclusive Van Damme in Nowhere to Run. American Wushu Jiquan I guess, I don't know, Trapping Hands. Um, yeah, so there you go. Let's uh, take a look through this a little bit. Just flip through it. This guy is creepy. You know, he's creepy. Yeah, he reminds me of Eric Bischoff when he was, uh, you know, tied to the NW or whatever. Um, actually, he might be, he might have been in like Karate Kid 2 or 3. Um, the one where they're in uh, Okinawa or what's it, what's it called? That was uh, Mr. Miyagi's home, home country. Okinawa, I think that's how you say it. But anyways, he was like one of the bad characters and he creeped me out on that and he creeps me out here too. But anyway, that's just me. I'm sure he's a, a fine gentleman. I'll skip through some of these. You can see I, I cut out some or somebody cut out some pages. But that's okay. That is quite okay. Trapping hands. Showing you some techniques that I'm sure work 100%. I 
recognize him from. I know he's a martial artist, but he was in King of the Kickboxers. Not Kickboxer, but King of the Kickboxers. Pretty good uh, B type of martial arts movie. I enjoy it a lot anyway. Oh yeah, and this is an article about Jean LaBelle. It's in there. And of course we heard uh, stories about him. His encounter with Steven Seagal on the set of some movie. And about somebody, I won't say who, um, defecating something. But hey, there's uh, Chuck Norris. Chuck Norris. There's that same guy from King of the Kickboxers, I think. Yeah. So, cool stuff, cool stuff. Alright, I think I'll just, uh, yeah, there's some more stuff in here, but I think I'll end this particular magazine. Put it over here. And then we have another magazine. Black Belt Magazine. World's leading magazine of self-defense. Van Damme loses lawsuit, must pay big bucks. Yeah, yeah, that's when I think he uh, blinded some guy. Oh, this one's from June 1993. Does it say the date on the other one? Now the weird thing is I looked through like I looked through everything. 
everything and it does not say Chuck Norris' name anywhere. So I, that's why I'm confused. Like, if you got Chuck Norris in your ad, wouldn't you, like, have his name plastered somewhere? But then again, it, his mustache is as good as his signature, so I, it's got to be him. But again, it's just kind of confusing without the full beard. Uh, but yeah, that's all I wanted to show you from this magazine. Oh, some cool merch on the back there. Switching gears completely now. I have some random comics uh, someone gave to me. Um, these are Garbage Pail Kids comics. Garbage Pail Kids Origins. Um, if you're not aware, they were like a parody of Cabbage Patch Kids in the 80s. They had these cards, and I did a video about that before. Um, but yeah, they had cards, uh, sticker cards kind of thing. Um, but yeah, this is a comic book about them. And they were pretty disgusting and, and uh, kind of gory sometimes you can see a nurse with a saw on the blood um the guy's picking his nose there um but and this comic i read the first one it's actually pretty good it's uh, the art was really surprisingly good it's kind of like a parody of steve rogers becoming captain america they explain how um they became the garbage pail kids um but the interesting thing is it's pretty violent and pretty you know, inappropriate jokes for younger audiences, but it says here, look what it says, I don't know if you can see that, all ages. So I'm thinking they made a mistake because I also have the second issue and it says teen plus. So maybe whoever was responsible for, you know, coming up with the ratings or whatever, like, oh, they're cute, I guess, they're, these are for, it's okay for kids. But anyway, so that's the first itch issue, issue by uh, Dynamite. Dynamite Comics, three ninety nine US. Issue number two. See this vampire dude here, kind of robot type guy. He says, "Fool, it will take more than a robotic freak to stop a vampire." So that's cool. Looks like a coloring book thing. You know what I mean? And then we have Mad Balls versus Garbage Pail Kids. Time again, slime again. So, yeah, Mad Balls was another thing from the 80s. I remember having some. They're, like, balls, basically, and, uh, like, maybe that big. And they had, like, these monster faces on it, and you can squish them, from what I remember. Um, but, yeah, they did a crossover here, and this is issue one. And this one says all ages as well. I'm not sure how accurate that is. But the cabbage pad, or the garbage pail kids, gotta get that right, um, look like cavemen in this one. It's kind of weird kind of a weird combination of stuff and then I guess this is a variant cover because it's also issue one and it's the same comic but I don't know okay now we have some interesting Snickers chocolate bars as you can see there this is berry whip flavor berry whip looks like it's got strawberries probably some other berries cream and Peanuts, I guess. I don't know, bro. It's interesting. I wonder how that tastes. And then we've got Snickers butterscotch flavor. I'm not sure how unique these are. I mean, I don't remember ever seeing these different flavors of Snickers, but I'm looking forward to trying these. Peanut butter. Two squares. I mean, pretty simple, but uh, yeah, I bet this one tastes really good. Uh, I guess pistachio and it looks like a almond. Definitely never seen this one around. And then we have a couple of interesting sodas here. This is Warheads Sour Black Cherry Soda. You know the Warheads uh, candy or gummies or whatever, they're usually gummies, right? And then there are a few others. There is green apple soda. And also watermelon soda. Put that down. And finally, what is this one? Lemon soda. So interesting, I wonder how sour this actually gets. I don't remember ever having sour soda before, so that should be interesting. 
Lastly, I want to show you this homebrew NES game. Um, this is a relatively recently released game for the NES, and it works in your regular NES. Well, we'll get to that in a second, but... And it's called Candelabra Estacero. Estacero, I guess you see it. I don't know. Not the greatest cover, but, you know. Let's look at the back here. I like the title screen shot they got there. And, okay, it says the first NES homebrew dungeon crawler to hit the market. Do you have what it takes to conquer the tears of Estocero es es and acquire the Candelabra? If I'm saying that right once again, but Candelabra Estocero is a 3D style action adventure dungeon crawler for the NES, which in which the heroes from the Mad Wizard, the Scarlet Matron, and the Warlord Slayer band together in a quest compelled by the king. I don't know if those are different games. Um, exploration within... Where did I go? Exploration within a maze environment while battling fantasy setting enemies are the fundamentals. Your journey will be complete upon reaching the plateau's top and finding the candelabra. There you could see the cartridge. That's yellow for some reason. Interesting choice for this kind of a game, but, you know. Okay. Oh, by the way, I think Sly Dog Studios is the developer, if I had to guess, and this is the publisher. I don't know, bro. Okay, here's the manual. You have this background story. I'm not gonna read all that, but I love these manuals, though I'm looking at manuals, and it's so nice to have a crisp manual that's not been destroyed by time and, and carelessness but there's the control scheme now this one's interesting because there are two you use both controllers at the same time um, and that's kind of unique so you have different maze navigation and combat controls more and more controls combat controls continued what else do we got here really so it seems like it's a pretty complicated game and I see it seems because I was never able to play it. it it just refused to work in my NES um, and unfortunately I didn't get the ROM as well that comes with it but uh, it's a shame I probably could have gotten my money back um, but I was just like whatever I didn't want to go through the hassle uh, but yeah I really wish I can play this maybe I can find the ROM one day um, not that I you know advocate for not just downloading the ROM for a game that you're supposed to pay for if it's a homebrew especially, but, you know, I paid for it, so. Uh, but anyway, yeah, it would be cool if I could play this one day. I tried so many, I tried cleaning out the cartridge and all that, it just wouldn't work, so. It is what it is, but it's still a cool thing to have on my shelf. Okay, well, I guess that's all I have for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it relaxing, and I'll see you guys next time.